everybody. This is Jackie Rivers from Paint with Jackie. Uh, it is almost springtime. Can you believe it? We have gone through the winter and we are getting really, really close to spring. I am so excited. I've had a lot of people reach out to me and ask to do a cardinal. So this one behind me is the one that we're going to be painting today. And I hope you join along with me. Uh, feel free to, to uh, rewind and play this at your leisure. I've just put out a free recording. So uh, yeah, have at it. This is uh, a fun little piece. I did a sketch so that you can have one to download on my website. So this is just the tracer for the cardinal and you can print that off and trace it with carbon paper. Go ahead and do that prior to, to uh, starting your painting. So I just traced it on and put it just about center, about oh a third of the way up. As you can see on the painting back here, we've got a birch tree that's coming down the right side of your painting, and then the branch is going to come underneath your cardinal. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the colors that you're going to need today. Whatever you have on hand, I just have a white, black, blue, red, and you're going to need a tinge of yellow. So also, we're going to need three brushes. And again, whatever you have on hand, I'm going to use a large brush, large flat brush, a smaller flat brush, and a liner brush. With that said, we also need our rinse water. Don't forget to rinse water. Your cloth to wipe off on and your beverage of choice. So let's start and have some fun. So this little cardinal. I have in my front yard, we have a lot of cedars around our property and we have one tree that's right along the front of the roadside, right next to our driveway. And it's full of berry vines, wild berries. So wild grape vines. Those cardinals absolutely love that tree. So we have the pleasure of looking out our front window every morning while having coffee and watching the cardinals play. So I hope you have that pleasure also because cardinals are one of the most beautiful birds, I think. And uh, they're pretty plentiful here in Vermont. And uh, we all know the saying about cardinals. It's a visitor from heaven when you see a cardinal. So we get a lot of visitors, which is amazing. All right, I'm just tapping my brush off. I've put some water on my brush, dunked it in water, tapped off the excess water. So I have some moisture in my brush to get going. For this background, it's just an array of sunshine coming through the back of this blue. And all I did with that, I'm just gonna pull some blue, just a touch of red, and I'm gonna pull in some of that white. I like to leave this marble. If you've followed along with me at all, you know that I love to leave my paint marble just to get those little touches of different colors on all at once. So I've got some marbled up paint. I'm gonna start right at the top. And I want this a little bit lighter, some brighter color coming down from the top. I'm just gonna kind of sketch this in there to start with, get my angles. So I want everything kind of coming towards this point here in the center, okay? You can do yours however you wanna do it. And I'm gonna go right over that cardinal. And if you drew it on, like I have done, I drew it dark enough so that you can see it through the paint, which makes it really easy when we go to paint it, of course. When you get down towards the bottom, go ahead and lift that canvas up out of your easel. You can set it on the lip there. Mine's a little bit tight here on the top. Just gonna pop that up. Just set that right up on your easel and get that front while you're going. So I have picked up some red, see how that's kind of blending through there. And this is just my first coat. So I'm gonna do a couple, that way I can have some nice coverage. You want some different tones of color coming through here. This is supposed to look like some sun shining through these clouds in the background. We're gonna add some more of that white here in just a minute. But this is a, 
a fun little painting. You can just kind of play with the color in the back. With springtime, we want it nice and nice and shiny and bright. Right now, it's a little bit deep in color, but we'll get there. Just keep pulling those colors onto your brush. Nice big flowing strokes. Just kind of alternating some of the color here. You don't want stripes, but you do want just some rays coming down in there. So I've kind of got some more purple in the middle and a little bit of deeper blues on the side. However yours turns out, just kind of go with it. Play with those colors a little bit. If you want it deeper even yet, just pull some more red into the side and with your blue and make that deep purple. Don't forget to pick it up and get the very front bits of your painting. Just let it go right off the edge. Use just the tips of your bristles and now soften that right up. Just soften really nice soft strokes. You can hear it kind of flicking off the end. Something like that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and let that dry while I do the sides of my canvas. Hang these up on the wall. You don't want these bare sides showing. Just be careful you don't hit your front. If you do, just come right back over it. Don't forget when you're done, also to hit the very bottom. Put these in a frame, this won't show, of course, but if you put it on the wall, I've got several of my paintings just kind of hanging up, as you can see, around the room in my art studio that don't have frames on them. So I always like to paint the edges, just gives you that finished feel, you know? My sister used to. Tell me when she took my classes before she moved away. My closet gallery is looking beautiful. <laughs> she now has them all hanging in her home. Get over her shyness. Be proud of what you do. Just hang your paintings up and people are going to be just amazed that, that when they ask, who did those? That was one of my first ones. This is a little bit later on when I started getting more into it. A lot of people are picking up painting as a hobby, especially through this corona time. There's not a whole lot to do. So leave me in the comments if you've picked up a new hobby during this time. I myself actually have. started doing resin, building tables and and uh, whatever I can make with resin, magnets for my refrigerator, some cutting boards. I've just had a really, really fun time with that. It's something I've wanted to learn for quite a while. Now I'm just going to pick up some white on my brush. I'm not even going to wash it off. I'm just going to pull some white into my brush. Something like that. I'm going to pull some of these rays down really softly. Just barely touching the canvas. Let it glide off your brush. If you run out, go ahead back in and grab some more. You don't want a wad on the end of your brush, so what I do is kind of tap it so I can get some of that paint leveled out on my brush. Right in with the blues and the red. So as much or as little rays as you want in here. But I'm just going to kind of have them all coming right down towards the center. If you want more coming from one side or more from the top, whichever way your sun is coming in, coming through those trees, 
See that background cloud? Go ahead and bring that sunlight in. If you want to add a little bit of yellow to this, you can do that as well. But be careful, you've got blue in the background, so you don't want it turning green. Very minimal. I'm just going to keep mine white, but. Yeah, something like that. Maybe a few little streaks to make it a little more defined. So I'm just using the very tip of my brush, straight up and down. A little, a little more defined sunlight in there. Yeah, something like that. I'm going to go ahead and wash my brush because I want all of that blue out of there. You get to have a nice blue colored rinse water now. So clean that brush off really good. All right, so now what I wanna do is I'm gonna bring this tree in here. So I'm just gonna go into the white. If you have a little bit of blue on your brush, you know, if you happen to get some in there, don't worry about that. It'll just act as a shadow in that tree. So I am gonna go with white on my brush. And then I'm gonna use just the tip of my brush and go into some of that black. You can see that little bit of black. And that's when I'm gonna have my shadow, okay? So my shadow, I want, oh, let's see. I think I'm gonna go with the shadow, yeah, on the back side. So I'm just gonna pull that down and you can see where the black and the white both are going onto the canvas at the same time. And that's gonna pull that shadow right in at the same time. Go ahead and load my brush up again. Do the exact same thing. A bit more on that tip. So your, black, your back of your brush, point of your brush where the black is, is where your shadow side is, okay? So I'm just gonna run this right down. And don't worry if some of that blue shows through, it's fine. If you want it all the way to the edge of your canvas, bring it all the way to the edge. Just lightly back and forth. Don't get rid of all of your white in there. All right, I'm going to go and rinse my brush out. And mine got a little bit overpowered with the black in the background. So I'm going to actually go in and pick up a little bit of that white bring that back in here. I want this tree to be a little bit wider than what I've got it. There we go. Bring some of that back in there. Like I said, it's okay if some of that blue shows through. That's just going to act as some shadow color in there. So lightly, lightly, gentle with the bristles. Just kind of blend that however you like it. This is all however you like it. All right, we've got that background drying a little bit. If you need to add anything more in there, I think I'm going to add a little bit more. of the blue with some white highlights over this way because I've got my my lighter side of the tree coming from this side. I want a little bit more highlight in here. I want some more more light coming from this direction. I'm actually going to brighten this side up just a little. Not too much. I don't want it to look like streaks. It look like sun ray. There we go. Just, oh yeah, I like that one. Just let it play. Let it play off your brush. Just like that. All, all in trying. Just try something different. All right, I'm just taking my small flat brush, defining this edge of the tree a little bit. Get a little more smooth out there on the edge. 
doesn't matter if it's doesn't need to be straight. Trees are not necessarily straight for the most part. They go all, all different directions. All right, I'm gonna add that branch in there. I'm gonna use my smaller brush. I wanna make sure I have good control over this. Same thing, you're gonna load up your brush with the white paint and then a little, little dab will do you on the corner of your brush. Put it on there so you can see that. So think about where your branch is coming out on your tree and you want it to go right underneath your bird. So I'm coming on the front side of his tail. So I'm just, and I don't want to cover up that wing. I do want the wing to show. So I'm going to kind of stop short of his wing and then bring this branch out wherever you want it. When you do branches, you're going from thick on one end where it meets the tree to out thin. So what I did with my brush is flat to start with. Pull that across there. And as I go, I'm just twisting my brush so that it flattens out. So I'm just using that very tip of my brush as it comes off. And a little more white in here. Again, go ahead and smooth your branch out, however you want it to look. Where it meets the tree, I want this curve down right here. So I'm gonna put a little bit of a shadow there. I also want it to blend in here. So I'm gonna build in just a little bit of color here. So you just kind of want to blend this out into that tree. Soften that. And you can put some, some little just kind of scars in the tree. Not a lot. This is a birch tree. So what we're going to do after we get this next branch on here, I'm going to show you how to put the birch marks in there. So again, we're going to go up. Where if you want another branch on yours, I'm going to build this one coming off the edge. I'll just kind of go off into the night. Same thing, you want that dark bottom. You can kind of bring some branches off wherever you'd like. Just using just the tip of your brush. Go back in. I didn't have much black on my brush to start with, so just going back in there. Carefully, don't widen that too much. And again, just going to blend this into the tree. A little shadow down below. Once this dries a little bit, you can go back in and touch it up and do some more detail. I'll let that dry a little bit before I do any more work on that. So as these branches get smaller, they do get a little bit darker. So you can just bring a little bit more darkness, a little more black into your brush and maybe just pick up a touch of white. That will create that little highlight on there. So I've got a little bit more black on my brush than I do the white right now. I picked up the white secondary this time. just for those smaller branches. And I can do your highlight on there, as well as your deep color. Again, let these dry a little bit. You can go back in and do some shadows and highlights in here. So I'm not gonna mess with that anymore right at the moment. I am going to put a couple more little branches up here because I want some of these little berries. Barely the tip of your brush and you want it straight up and down. Straight up and down. Just use the tip of your brush. Touch a little harder when you start and let it come right off the canvas. I just kind of let it roll in my fingers a little. I'm not going to do too many, just a few up there. Just a little bit darker, so I'm going to bring that out a little bit more. 
going to have these little berries coming off of these. Here we go. While you've got that black on there, if you want to, my shadow is not quite dark enough back here, so I'm going to darken that up just a little. Again, I don't want it to look like a stripe. So in between, if you dry your brush off, I've got dark, real dark in the back, but I want that to soften into the white. So I just dried my brush off and I'm just going to go in between the two and just come down with a clean brush and just lightly blend that out very softly. And if you need to add more white in there, you can go ahead and add more white if you want it brighter. But I think mine's bright enough. I'm going to go ahead and add some detail to that tree. So when you do your detail, I'm just doing like a dark gray with this little flat brush. So I just pulled some white, and some black, and made like a deep gray color. I don't want it to be just black because that will overpower. I just want kind of a medium gray. So mix that up until you're happy with it. And I'm just going to flat brush, just touch the very tip onto the canvas at the edge of the tree. And you want kind of an under scoop, not, not like a U, but just you want that rounded look on your tree. If you went straight across, it would look like a board. So you want that little bit of a rounded scoop. So come right from the edge. Some that are not so much from the edge. And bring them from the other way. You can add some white ones in there if you want. Just get some of that highlight color back in there. Don't overdo. Just however you want yours to look. So I'm not doing the whole thing. I'm just kind of like hit or miss. And then I'm going to go back in in a minute and I'm going to Put some a little bit more detail in here. So you can see like the little um, scratch marks in the bark where it's separated. If, you, if you've not seen a white birch tree, they're pretty cool. Just the way that the bark is on them. All right, something like that. However you want yours to look. Same on the bigger branch. You want that to have, my hand's going to be in the way here a little bit, but same thing. You want that to have those rounded bits of bark. Don't cover up all your white at the top, but just kind of give that little curved touch. Whoops. Now I'm gonna, I get to show you something. Clean, dry brush, or clean, damp brush, I'm sorry. See how I just went down here, out of the way? Clean, damp brush, just squiggle that lightly across there and it will erase it, just lightly. If you pull off the underneath of the paint, you can go back in and just retouch that. But a clean, damp brush, if your paint has not dried yet, you can kind of dip Touch that really lightly and it will pull it off. So I just pulled a little bit of the blue, so I'm just going to touch that blue back in there. It's an easy way to fix your little mistakes if you have any. But mistakes are, are uh, sometimes happy mistakes. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and take some of my white now. And I'm just going to touch a little bit on top. I want this to be just a touch of no on top of here. It, it is springtime almost, but we still have a little. I'm just tapping a little bit of snow on these branches, just a touch. 
can be a highlight. I'm also going to bring that down here and there, just that little round curve, just to get it some character on those branches in here. Just touching. All right, I'm going to add just a little white character, some of the patches coming across, just plain white on my brush. I'm just going to add some of that white back in there. I don't want to cover up all of that background color. I want some of that coming through. But just kind of eyeball it, see what you like. Add some black there that just came through, but that's okay. We can touch that and blend it right in there. And that's okay. So I'm coming from both sides a little bit. Yeah, I like that. Just pull in some of that white, touch the edge, get that little round under scoop. Same thing up here, I'm just going to touch some of that white in there. Do some little scarring around that, where that comes together. Yeah, you can just kind of tap in. a little bit of scarring around the branch where it comes together. Don't have to do too much, but that gives it a little bit of character. It's an easy way to get some of that character around your connection where your branch and your tree connect. Just tap in a little bit of white on here. Same up here. Just going to tap. Just a little highlight. All right. So make it as much detail as you want, as little detail as you want. I'm going to add just a little bit more. Because birch trees, I have a little bit of black on my brush. I flattened the tip out. So if you can see that, it's flattened right out and just black on my brush. So birch trees also have a little bit of scarring sometimes that comes across where those parts of their bark just kind of breaks apart or, you know, grows apart. So there's some, some darker areas. Just give that a little bit more depth there. Some, some shadow coming down underneath that branch a little. A little bit of scarring. Just the same motion. That little bit of a U shape. And you know this, the uh, heartbeat shape? Just some little squigglies up and down. Just a little bit of that here and there. Give a little bit of shadow under this one. Again, just play as much as you want. Dark shadow and some little choppy lines, maybe. Nothing too defined. Yeah, something like that. Just bring off some little teeny branches. You can go down to your liner brush for this also if you want. But just have fun with it. Just play. You can fit in as much or as little as you want in there. The more little teeny detail you have in there, the more intriguing your painting is. So makes it a lot of fun. And if you can 
use your tiny brush. All I do with that is just um, put some water on it on the tips of your bristles and loosen up that paint just a little bit. You want it to be kind of the consistency of ink. And then I just roll my bristles to fill up the bristles in that small, tiny liner brush. I like to use my pinky to kind of guide myself, make sure your painting is dry. But to get those little tiny lines, just let your tip of your brush touch the canvas. And it's okay if they're squiggly, let them come right off. And again, make sure that you've got just the tip touching. And that'll give you some nice little control, okay? That's an easy way to get some little lines in there. And it's fine if they're squiggly, little branches are squiggly. so. It's okay if you're nervous. That's a good time to be nervous. All right. So I am going to go ahead and start basing in that bird, the cardinal, male or female. You tell me. I know because I watch them all the time. All right. So we're going to go ahead and base that cardinal in. Just red. And if your red is not covering really well over the blue, you can go ahead and grab a little bit of white, not too much because you don't want it to turn pink. But I'm going to go ahead and cover all of the cardinal except for the beak. Okay. You can actually leave this little bit right here around this um, beak where that black is. Oh, I just gave you a hint on whether it's male or female, didn't I? You all probably know anyways because the male species of birds are usually the prettier ones. So yes, this is a meal. I'm sure you got it right. All right, so I am covering everything and then I'm gonna come back in with the black and do that area. But you can do it however you want. You don't need to fill in that black area. So I'm trying to use the outside corner of my brush and go along these edges. It's a good way to get the detail. So remember that branch is in front of the tail, on mine anyways, yours may be behind. I'm just filling all of this in with red to start with. Just, I like to go in the direction of the feathers and that way you know, I picked up a little bit of white on there too, just to cover that blue in the background a little bit better. So when you're painting, think about the direction of whatever you're designing. So if you have the feathers, you want to go in the direction of the feathers, how they grow. If you think about, you know, the belly, the rounded shape of the belly, these feathers on the wing come down in that direction as well. Just kind of give it that little swoop as you come down. And then just give that shape of the tail when you get towards the end. If you go over the white like I just did on the branch, that's okay. You can go back and touch that up. That's not so hard, is it? Come on, you got this. You got this. All right, I'm going to go in and pick up a little bit of the yellow with red, and I'm just going to make that a little bitty orange, and I'm going to go in and fill that beak in. I've got a little red towards the bottom. Just happened to go that way, which is actually the way I wanted it. So it can shadow at the bottom and be a little brighter at the top. You can go down to your tiny brush for this if you'd like. And hard to get it with this one, but all right. So we've got our bird based in. 
And while we're using this red, I'm gonna go ahead and show you a trick to do with your large brush. I went ahead and rinsed that out. I'm gonna let that bird dry for just a minute. So with your large brush, if you have a larger handle on there, like I do, the butt end of your brush, I'm just gonna take the red and pop my brush right into the red paint and then just touch and make a bundle of berries at the end of these branches. You can do it with the tip of your tiny brush if you want. You kind of go in a circular motion if your brush handle is not big enough. Once you touch that canvas. But I'm just doing a little bunch of berries on the end of each of these. And maybe just a couple that cross the branches here and there. I'm going to pick up my little liner brush. And I'm going to take... Just a little touch of black and then go into my white. So I've got black loaded on my brush and then white. I'm just going to touch a few of these. Some of the white will come off and some of the black will come off. So I look like the berries where they have the little end of the berry. You don't have to hit them all. I'm going to go back to the little flat medium one and I'm going to build in some of the shadows. I'm going to take the red with some of my black, just a touch of black, I got too heavy there, so I'm pulling some more of that red. I'm just going to load my brush with this deep color. So it's just a deep red, a little bit of black, a little bit of red, and I'm going to make my wing. So the underneath of the wing, right here, and then I want to give some shadow on this belly. So I'm going to bring that line and then blend some of that color in there. If you want your bird to be a little bit brighter in red, you can actually pull some of that, more of that red in there first. We'll go back in and pull some more of that red in here. Brighten him up a little bit. I want the top of the bird in the wing a little bit brighter in color. It's where the sun is hitting. So as I'm coming down, I'm going to go ahead and pick up some of that deeper red with the black in it. And that way I can bring my shadow color right in here. A little bit of that shadow color on the belly. Some of that shadow color under the wing. I also I'm going to put some coming down this base of the tail. I need to find some of those feathers in there. Define that belly a little bit more. And you can go down to your little brush or you can stick with this brush. I'm just gonna outline this wing. The tiny brush would probably be better for this, but I'm gonna, yeah, let's do that. Loosen up that black paint a little bit. So all we're doing here is just I loosened up the black paint a little bit with water again. 
rolly brush in it to get that really fine point on there. So we're going to start detailing this bird out. So I want this base of the wing, the underneath of that wing, to be kind of deep in tone. So I'm outlining that. I want these little feathers. To be outlined. Some of these coming down the wing, that front wing. As much detail or as little as you want. I think that's as much as I'm going to do there. I also want the crown detailed a little. And really fine. If you can get the real fine detail around the face and around the beak, just very tip of your brush, get that outline there. And that's going to add some depth to that. Okay. Also, we want this that part of the tail. And they have a little little point down here where the uh, if you're if you can see your They've got a little point that is right in this vicinity where the feathers connect to the, the uh, tail, but you probably can't see that. And that's okay. So I just did some lines on the tail, gave it a little bit of a shadow color down there, and I'll call that good. Now, the interesting part is right around the beak. So on a cardinal, Right on the forehead part, there's a little bit of black that kind of comes from a point up here and it comes in a little bit around this beak and comes out into the, the face, almost like a mask. Okay, and then it comes out again a, a little bit right at the base of the where the beak comes, that little point right here comes out again, and then comes down to the front. So if you just have that little bit of black coming down the chest, just under the beak, this little rounded bit here, it'll give you that indication that it's your cardinal. I do a little bit of white for the eye. Not too much, just a little touch. I'm gonna to put a little bit of white highlight on top of the beak. I'm gonna add some bits of highlight because you've got that sun coming through the cloud. Right, so your, your highlight's coming here. So I want a little bit on the forehead, just a touch. You can add a little bit of yellow in that if you don't want to just use white. All depends on you know how much work you want to put into it, but a nice soft yellow mixed with that red, just a little bit of orangey color almost. It's gonna give you a little bit of a highlight right there on top of the head. You don't want it too much. I got a little too much in there. Go back in with red. Just a little. I'm going to brighten that yellow up on the beak a little bit. Right now, you can just kind of play with your color. I'm going to add maybe some little touches of that orange color in the wing. Just a little to give it some highlights in there. Maybe come down his back just a little bit. Make sure that you put your name on it. You wanna make sure that everybody knows it's yours. So whether it's in your closet, just because you've just had fun with it, or it's hanging right in your front room, make sure that your name is on it. Because when you look back, 
especially if you're just beginning painting, when you look back and you see your progression from where you start to where you're at, it is so much fun to look back at these. And I always date mine as well. You can put it on the back, front, whatever, but just have fun. And I hope you've enjoyed this painting and enjoy the Cardinals and all of the other birds that are coming around. It is springtime in Vermont and I am really excited about that. So enjoy, thanks for joining me and don't forget to leave some comments for me. Love ya, see you soon, bye.